Hey guys, it's Kevin. So they're going to go over update on the printhead cover for the Epson XP15000. This card can be found at the bchtechnology.com. You can go to accessories, printhead cover, and then now the version 2 will look like this. You only need one, so I just afraid that you're going to break one when we install it. So I just gave you another one for free. So you always got a double. The reason we have updated is I found that if we have a top cover box on, one is really a little bit harder to install. Second one is it might knock you off the the range of calibration. So I got this brand new printer. I just tuned it, and right now it is printing an example that we're going to compare after we install the printed cover. We start by removing the duplexer. And then we remove the paper tray. Get a flathead screwdriver. This is probably the only time you can use a flathead screwdriver for the Epson. This panel is easy to remove. Just lift it up. Then look top down. You're going to see two screws on each side of this long panel. Remove them and the, this long panel will be right off. Then there will be two screws. One is here. Another one is on the bottom, then you can take the cover off. Do it on the left side and the right side. We're going to work on the left side. The reason I took the right side panel off is because I need to free the print head. On the right side, find this gear and use a screwdriver to push it counterclockwise. And you will find that the print head carriage is unlocked. Also, you can just turn the power on and when the carriage moves, cut the power off. And most likely, you cut the power first and then you realize the print is still locked. And this is just a trick that unlocks the print head without the power. Now we remove all the cartridges. There's a hole there for you to remove the screw. I've seen so many people just yank it off and break this assembly. Anyway, put a piece of plastic back here to protect the print net. And remove the two screws. Now you can take this off without breaking it. Remove the two screws underneath. Here's why we need the version number two. is because this has to be installed really tight. And if there's a gap, you have to realign and calibrate your printer. There are two more screws underneath here. I've seen lots of people breaking this piece too. I usually just lift it from the middle because it's secured on the two ends. So if I leave in the middle, it's going to jump right out or flying out. If you do it properly, it won't break at all. You can see there's a big dent here that's for the screw. So you know which side going up, which side going down. To install it, just put it on the cover and push on the both end, it's going to lock. If it doesn't, just give a little bit of help and it's going to lock itself. OK, I'm going to remove it again so you can get a clear picture. There we go. Here's where it's easy to break. You can see how thin the plastic is. I'm thinking of making some replacements. If you guys need it, let me know. I'll make some. Now two more screws. You can lift up the print head. There's a double-sided tape on the bottom. You want to pull the cable out so you give yourself enough working space. And now we take the cable off. And we're going to secure this page with the sir first. Remove this screw. And we're not going to put this screw back. So store this screw somewhere else. We're going to use this silicon gel with precision applicator and spray on it. Make sure to not cover this black dot. And that's the width sensor. <laughs> you don't want to cover that one with a sex seal. You know thing? Make sure you cover and seal where the cable goes in. Okay. We want to put the guard and the FFC cable on first. Then we use the silicon seal. If you have a problem to insert the cable through the guard, one way is just loop the cable through the guard. Insert the cable securely. Then move the guard over the print head. And now it's time to seal the top 
and uh, also the top layer and uh, the bottom layer and the middle layer of the FFC cable. And then just seal around the print net and make sure all the sides are sealed. So I forgot to film this, so I just grab a print net and show you to seal it. You want to be sure that the silicon seal go underneath and that there's no way the water or ink can get in. When we install, do not install that screw that I mentioned. And push the print head down and make sure there's no seam. See, if I put this screw back, the print head will not line up and it will be too high. It's not really significant higher, but you have to do a lot of adjustment if you put a, leave the screw in. So that's why I just took it out. And now just reverse everything and put a two screw here and put a cartridge guard, two more screws and the CSSA assembly and two more screws and you're ready to put a cartridge back. If after this your printer doesn't print, it probably is you didn't insert the printhead cable correctly and the printer cannot send a signal to the printhead. If you print in weird colors, probably you have air bubbles you can introduce when you're doing this. Yeah, that makes sense. So the air bubble get air lock, so you just do some hair cleaning to remove the bubbles. I suggest you to do a one cleaning immediately and then print the nozzle check. Make sure the nozzle check look good. So this is our first the nozzle check. The black is clogged. So we do a print that cleaning. If you did not scratch your print that on the floor, usually just some air introduced during your work. So one or two head cleaning should fix it. And then if it's still looking weird, you might do alignment and just go to your home and then maintenance. And in the maintenance below the pre-net cleaning, you're going to see the alignment. There's a vertical, there's horizontal. If you want to do it, why not just do both? We'll print a page like this. And then it will ask you pick the square with a few streaks. So one, two, three doesn't look good, and seven doesn't look good. So go back, and we'll select number five. So I like to look at both ends, then I go to the middle and select the one in the middle. I think there are seven rows. Just after that, click this proceed, then dismiss, and that'll be done. Now we can do another horizontal alignment. Usually this one will not change that much. You just look for the ones that doesn't look like overlap or separated. Now I do another printout and we can compare this printout after we install the printed guard versus the one that this is the one we printed before. I made a hole on there. Yeah, let's compare those two and see if there are any differences. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers.